that one that one woke me up. Yeah. When the I'm music all. started playing and and the bass hit. I was like, oh, we got a podcast to yeah. do, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome now to the Run. Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm Nick Scarpino, one of your hosts, alongside uh, Joey Noel. Hello. And I'm Roger here. Picorni. Yeet. And Snowbike Mike. Mike, how you doing today? What's up, homie? Good. <laughs> We're great. Snowbike Mike, uh, right before we started the podcast, or actually about two hours ago, was like, homie, I got a haircut at 2.30, uh, but I'll be back by 3 for sure. <laughs> 323 yeah. right now. Yeah. A lot of people wonder, they go, why did Mike choose to have this haircut at 2.30 if he knew he was going to be on the podcast at 3? And I asked him that question. And Mike said, oh, Andy just told me that I was on the podcast. To which Barrett earlier replied, no, he didn't. He actually swapped that out three days ago. Yeah, he did. Definitely and then did. Mike was like, well, I can't get another appointment. Yeah. To which uh, I replied, Mike, you go to a barber in Daly City. They're not that stacked. No. I think they might be pretty busy because it's a pretty small shop. But he could have shown up any time in the last could have called him and said, can I come by on Saturday or Monday or whatever. And also, I don't know if you know this, he's really good friends with this uh, barber. They're like, homies. Yeah, like, he, he, he that, the guy has our Twitch streams on all the time. Like, they're Why? that close. Because they're like, he they're like boys. knows what, the, yeah, they're the boys. So he has his number. He could text him. He could be like, ah, no. Nah, can I you sneak me in a little bit early? Yeah, exactly. Maybe 15 minutes early. 22, 15 so I can make it on my podcast yeah, by exactly. 2.30. No, nah, but he can't. he can't. He doesn't want to put him out. No, nah, yeah. I can't do that. Can't, I can't, can't put out Greg that, Miller. Can't put no. out the barber. But can't then put puts out, out everyone else. Can't <laughs> can't he, looked at, he looked at me before this podcast and he said, Roger, if I can't make it, if, if the haircut goes long, you're you're in. And I looked at him and I said, I'm, I'm already, already in. in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already in. You see, when we put the when we when we put the calendar invite, the names by the thing. Yeah. Are generally the people that are supposed to be on the thing. Yeah. yeah. Mike knows that, of course. We're giving him sure he'll be here in a couple seconds, folks. Of course, this is a kind of funny podcast where each and every week, four, sometimes five friends gather around this table. I just heard the door. Yeah. <laughs> so I, and I could hear Mike, like, he's probably listening. Tight ass, good posture, just ro- like walk running in right he's now. He's taking his time. He knows it. He's taking his sweet time. He's got to drop it off. Uh, folks, if you love what we do, please consider supporting us with the kind of funny membership over on Patreon to get all of our shows ad free. Watch us record them live and get a daily exclusive experience from Greg Miller. You can get the kind of funny podcast for free with ads and without exclusive content on YouTube and podcast services around the globe. Shout out to our wonderful Patreon producers who, without you, we could not make this show possible. James Hastings, Casey Andrew, Kiernan Jose, Jose, Jose Sapien. I nailed it three weeks in a row. <laughs> and the second and the fourth the week is just like, just gonna get you. that's a tough one. Carl Jacobs, Kashan Patel, Karen Lindner, and Nathan Lamoth. We appreciate you. Very, you. very, very much. Shout out to our uh, our illustrious sponsors today, Factor. We'll talk about them a little bit later. Before the podcast started, we, it's so funny because we always have these very interesting discussions like right before the podcast yeah. starts. Yeah. And then right when it starts, we tighten up a little bit. Yeah. But Joey, Joey, or one of you, was it you that said who who has the most brain rot in the office oh, yeah. at this yeah. point? Oh. Yeah. Clearly it's I me. We'd re- no. we to collective consciousness here. At this point, we're the same person. Yeah, I don't know that I can claim that. Really, <laughs> not with Nick. Nick might be the outlier. No, the but you, we all have we all have like little inklings of Nick within oh. us at all times. G- okay. Yeah, it's true. Elaborate on that. I mean, I just, I just, what I look it? at Nick sometimes, and he looks back at me, and we're just one, you know exactly right? And he just, it. he winked, he knew you know it. Exactly. Yeah, we know. <laughs> name one thing, Roger, that I've influenced your life positively, in, and then name Ooh. two things negative. <laughs> you want me to start with which one do you start with? Because one's D- dealer's easier than the choice. Other. Dealer's uh, choice. One's easier than the other. <laughs> Positive. Positive. I mean, mm-hmm. strong, older, male role model. You know, someone mm-hmm. I can look up to, yeah. right? Negative. Mm-hmm. No sock. I mean, well, no shoes sometimes. No shoes sometimes. No shoes sometimes. Yeah, that's no probably Joey's negative too. as well. Yeah. Sometimes beatboxing makes me angry good because you're really good. Oh. It makes you angry. But then it makes me angry because it's like, it's, it's like, if like, he was bad at it, I would be okay with it. You know what I mean? Like, if it was just like a little tick that he does, where he's yeah. like, blah, 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 blah. but he's just like really good at it. It's like you're showing off right now. So those are the two negatives and the one positive. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you for being uh, nice to me on the negatives. What's funny is Fran, of all people, loves when I beatbox. And then he tries to beatbox back to me. And I'm like, it's not. We got to no. shut that down. He can't do it. Shut that down. He can't do it. Where did that come this. from? You're just always My brother. Beatboxing? Yeah, my brother does that all the time. He used to. He's like the master at it. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder if I can do that, and it's I can really do it good. too. But yeah, Matt. Matt is definitely one of those human beings that if it's quiet in the room, he can't stand that. So yeah. he has to make some sort of sound, much like a child. <laughs> you know, to just be like something. Someone's got to draw the attention somewhere. We can't have a, yeah. a moment of peace and quiet here. Yeah. How dare we be left alone with our thoughts for a single second? It's uh, they're too intrusive. No. We can't. We couldn't possibly. Joey, yeah. Who do you think has the most? Who do you think is the most at the end of their rope in this office right now? At the end of their rope, I mean, it, <laughs> there's a lot of different <laughs> options. 
My gut instinct says Tim. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Perpetually. We just put, there's so much on Tim. We just keep putting stuff on Tim. And one of these days, Tim's going to break. No. I think he broke a long time ago, but it's like that sound your car makes. We're like still going. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. not a good sound. No. It's like no, a fan belt thing or a grinding. And I should, de and at some point this engine is going to explode, but it hasn't yet. Yeah. So it I only happens when okay. I turn left. You know what I mean? As long as yeah. it doesn't happen when I turn right, it's fine. It's yeah. Fine. That's so funny. So I do think that he's the one we've broken the most. In terms of other, I do think that we've also broken Kevin quite a bit. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but Kevin's like, a, Kevin's like a bone where you break him, he comes back stronger. Is that how mm. bones work? I think so. Really? Kevin? The science with Kevin. Is that how it works? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay. Pretty much. <laughs> at, the si at the site where it's broken, it can okay. never break there again. It becomes adamantium steel. Really? Yeah, that's why all adamantium the other parts steel. That's wow. what it is. Holy start breaking shit. around it. Yeah, I see, I got it. a lot to teach you, Roger. Yeah, teach me some more. Stick with me. Um, are Stick you on the white collar train now that that's available for streaming? Or oh, it is. Are you not taking Joey, up that mantle? it's so interesting that you say that. <laughs> what a great rabbit hole we're going to go down on this podcast right now because currently there's no evidence that a broken bone will grow back stronger. <laughs> Uh, than it was once before it was healed. Although there is a brief time when the fracture site is stronger, this is the fleeting. Uh, uh, this is fleeting, and the healed bones are capable of breaking again anywhere, including at the previous fracture site. Yeah, yeah. but like, have okay. we tested that out? Yeah, no one's yeah. figured it out. Mike, I need you to break your leg, heal it, and then we break it again. That we could implement. I mean, you know about my broken elbow, right? That I never got fixed. No, <laughs> I fractured my elbow playing basketball. How um, long ago? Right before the pandemic. So this was what two going on three years ago now. Uh, and I was supposed to go in and get it checked. You know, I got the I got the X-ray. She's like, "Oh, it's fractured. You know, you're gonna have to come back, and we might have to put you through surgery." <laughs> COVID happened. I never returned. No, you got to go back. And I live fine. You know what I mean? You you come back stronger. You come yeah. back better. What did you What did you say about your arm? Sometimes sometimes it's in pain. You know what I mean? If <laughs> oh, I yeah. if I lie in bed and I'm scrolling TikTok for an insane amount of hours and i'm like this my elbow starts to feel a lot of pain you yeah, know what i mean a lot of pain maybe sometimes i overstretch and i'm like ah oh, that's painful but like i'm back better i'm fine you know what i mean i gotta i gotta uh this i injured this shoulder in like year one of jujitsu like trying to pull it out of an arm bar and just not tapping Jesus. early enough and just like trying to get myself out of stupid situations so the shoulder feels totally fine 100 percent mobility if i lay like, you know, if you lay down for a massage or something where you're just kind of laying in the same spot for a long period of time, or if I go to the barber and they do like the hot towel thing to me, mm -hmm. if I'm there for too long, my hand goes numb. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go around the table. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> Should I have that looked at? Should I have that severe nerve damage looked nah, at? Nah, nah, that's chill. That's normal. That is one of those things where you start thinking, because I, as you guys know, I don't think I've told the audience yet this, but I, I, I injured my shoulder pretty badly a couple weeks ago in jiu-jitsu. Just normal, normal wear and tear of just doing a contact sport like that at 44 years old. Actually, at any age. I shouldn't even claim it's my age. It's yep. just a freak accident that happened. I went down. Someone came down like on top of me. My shoulder went right into the mat, and I felt kind of a little little hinky-dinky crunch. Were you, tear would you thing. like scream when that happened? Well, Did fuck you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, there was, oh, a, there was an wow. audible like, ooh, like I was. Holy shit. I was like, ah, you know, <laughs> give him one of those. Um, had to leave, still very much in pain. Went to the orthopedic surgeon, and he was like, I don't think you broke. You didn't break anything because I got an x-ray on it. He was like, you probably have a tear, and, I, and I've got a lot of bruising out here, so that kind of, and you know, you can't put a lot of pressure on it. But I'm supposed to go back to the orthopedic, the ortho on Monday, and I'm like, eh. what if you just don't go? <laughs> <What if laughs> He's gonna go? come back stronger, Raj. You know because what I mean? here's the thing: what if I, he just doesn't go? Yeah. At this point, and even doing this really hurts. Um, okay. At this point, <laughs> so just extending your arm, just like this right there, it hurts. Range yeah, motion. this feels good, right? Yeah. It's mostly oh, right, so just like right there. Eighty percent. You know, I'm eighty percent. I mean, he's 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 right. Fine to me. How are you, how are you doing math in well, your like, school? You know, this a hundred. He's he was right there. That's what? eighty percent to me. That's eighty yeah, percent. What about this whole back part? No, that part's fine. Yeah, well, that part's fine. That it's just at this yeah. one part that right here. Three sixty percent is what you want, Joe. If we're doing a full circle. Three sixty percent. Three sixty would be a hundred. We'll start uh, with that. We'll just use two square numbers right now. In my mind. <laughs> <laughs> the question is like, because he was like, come back, and if it still hurts or whatever, we'll we'll give you like an MRI and see if it's like torn, and if it's torn. To a certain degree, like if he's like, you probably have a rotator cuff tear, but the question is like, will it just heal on its own, which they don't often do apparently, or do you have to have some sort of surgery for it? A little but laparoscopic. It, yeah, maybe. but at this point, I'm like, 
I just wait eight I'm weeks. I'm chilling, yeah. And when, see what happens. When right? was the MRI machine <laughs> created? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> let's look at when that came out. <laughs> look at this. What's you know, the correlations with age? doctors lining their pockets. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> what? we are not let's going down this rabbit hole. Like, are there's, you going down? There's hundreds upon thousands of years where other people didn't go in for an MRI. They survived. Nick will be fine. Nick will yeah. be fine. I mean, yeah, think about it. Is he going to live to 80? Also, what, like, what am I doing? What do you want him that to I reach up to the cheese hits up on the top shelf? Can't get He'll that shelf fine. anyway. Well, Can't thinking, get up there anyway. This is just going to deteriorate no, no as Nick gets underneath. older. Oh. I don't want D to have to start wiping Nick's ass, you know? Damn. I can't. Two, first off, I got two good hands. Two good hands. And we have a hose. <laughs> So just push throw you in the shove, shower and hose you down. Hose me down, hose me down like you're delousing a prisoner. You know what I mean? Just yeah. get me, in, get me in, get me out of there. Mm-hmm. No, but it is one of those things where like we're. I'm just like, dude. First off, it, I'm claustrophobic, so my fear of the MRI machine is like mm-hmm. guiding a lot of this. I've yeah. done a few. If MRI. I wasn't claustrophobic, I'd be like, and, my, and also the fact that MRIs are fucking outrageously expensive. Yeah, correct. But like. If it, I mean, it's most of the claustrophobia because I believe in like, look, if you got to spend some money on your health, that's the most important thing. But I just, I'm like, don't sandwich me into this. Have you fucking, done an MRI before? I've done multiple MRIs before. Okay, me too. And I do not like them. Yeah. And I have yet to go in head first and I can't do it. Yeah. They tried to put me in head first on my knee one time and I was like, hey, brainstorm sesh real quick. <laughs> what if you flip me around and just put my leg in? The guy's like, oh, we can do that too. I was like, thank you. Homie, come here. Homie, come here. Let me rotate it. <laughs> Let me break it down for you. I've told you on the form of claustrophobic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doctor gave me a fucking like sleeping pill because I'm claustrophobic, oh, right? All this shit. No, it was like a, um, yeah, maybe it's an It was something else. It was like a, oh. what, what did they used to give to like to like uh, people all the time if they had quote unquote trouble sleeping? It wasn't Ambien. It was like a Valium. Oh, Val- Valium. Valium. He gave me a Valium, and I was like, put that in the pocket for later. <laughs> um, but I was like, bro, so you're gonna tell me the whole time like I was worrying about this? You could put me in the other way. He's like, yeah, and I was like. Just as a person who has claustrophobia and you have, I'm sure, other patients today that are going to suffer from this, that's your starting point, yeah. dog. Not a negotiation. And they're such assholes, these like MRI techs, because they don't have time. Because people freak out and oh, they don't yeah. have, they're like, oh, fuck now. This yeah, is going to take yeah. forever. I'm backed up. I have other patients. Yeah. And I'm like, so it dude. it moves a little bit. Yeah. Let me just explain to you guys what this is like for someone with claustrophobia. It is my worst fucking fear. Yeah. To be sandwiched in there. You can't move. You can't get out of it. And the, the worst part about it is that you can't wheel yourself. If I could go in there and be like, okay, I'm cool, I can get out whenever I want, it's cool. But it's like, they strap you in, and it's like, and you can feel the motorized pull, and you're like, I can't slide this thing out of here if I don't, if I can't. It's the, it's the worst. But I got through. Anyway, so long story short, I'm sure the shoulder will It'll heal be on fine. its own. It'll be fine. I'll be fine. I for Take sure broke one of my toes a few weeks but ago. you can't do shit about toe. Yeah, like, for sure. Like, it was like one of those things like, oh, that's a bad stub, and I was like, ooh, this still hurts. And then it healed weird, and now like, Randomly, I just get like a little jolt. Of, like it's been like a month, that's maybe weird. two months. Yeah, it's for sure not great. <laughs> That'll be great for your half marathon training. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean that's over now. I got the medal. It, it, it happened. I did it. I did it technically. We got you know medals. I mean? did you we hear? got medals. Mike Mine got enough. Mike, Mike and I equal. delivered. Mike and I are equal. Dude. We've done the equal amount of half marathon training runners and everything. here. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you Look this. There was no way. As I was as I was uh, going through the trials and tribulations of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which has led me to my current pain threshold. Uh, I was supposed. We do a lot of in-house competitions, and that's how we do promotions for you. Do you, either ex- like, comp- real competitions or in-house competitions. They're both same level of like of uh, of, of nerve wracking. There was one time and I was like, "Fuck!" Okay, and they get you right. They go to the class. Hey guys, great class right now. You guys coming to the competition on Saturday? You're gonna be here. You're gonna be here. You're gonna be here. And they go one by one by uh. one. And if you go, no, nah, I can't. They go, you can't. And you gotta explain in front of the entire class what uh. bullshit, fucking bullshit excuse you. Oh, my brother's in town. It's like jury duty. It's at duty. 10 o'clock in the morning. Trying to get out of jury duty. So I find, I get roped into the, I mean, I'm talking roped into it. I'm like running away. I, I got I'm, I got excuses that fucking, you yeah. know, you can't even think about. It. I was like, the aliens are coming on yeah. Saturday, bro. I got to come greet them, right? <laughs> but my head instructor is like, no, you got to come. I was like, fine, I got to come. He's like, dude, come on. That's all it took. The Friday before that competition, get the email. Hey, so-and-so is sick. Yes. Canceling the competition. Fuck yeah, bro. No better feeling. No, nope. but and some people like real competitors, people that are actually good at things, like guys that get like their black belts in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, disappointed. Of course, they of course. trained hard yeah. for these things. Me, live to die another day. Fuck yeah, <laughs> send, the the t-shirt, tell them, yeah. send the t shirt, tell them, send the t shirt. Give me the medal. We get yeah. medals too. Yeah. They give us like, give me the medal. Just send that thing. Just give it. Yeah. Yeah. We've never seen your Jiu Jitsu medal. Uh, there, I mean, the in house competitions are more like just a. It's a fun like reward for doing the thing. You so stri- you get a, if, if you compete, you get a stripe on your belt. If you win and you're due for a promotion, that's how we get promotions. And then, of course, yeah. if you go out and do a, a, an external competition like uh, Jiu-Jitsu World League or like or, or Naga or any of those places, like if you beat people in those, those 
I don't know, they count the same, but you also get promoted there as well because that's you going up against like a rival school, just like Cobra Kai. So cool. You're going to be in it one of these coming days. back. You're going to be in it. Cobra Kai? I can do it. You heard about yeah. Raj, right? Did you hear Potentially. Joe? Yeah. Potentially. Gonna Did you Wait, share I don't know it with if we're the people put this No, okay, I haven't talked yet. about it. Yeah, okay. We're not putting it out. 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 We're, not, we're dipping a toe in. We're dipping a toe in. I like that word exploring. I like that word learning. Um, I have a question for you with your claustrophobia. Sure. Does that include elevators? Like oh, it's yeah. getting stuck in a, oh, oh, yeah. that, this oh, weekend. Do you take the stairs whenever? That's what happened to me this weekend. Um, <clears throat> I don't have an issue in most elevators, <clears throat> but there are moments. So we were at uh, D and I on our last vacation. We were at a museum. I can't remember which one. We were at a museum and we needed to go up to like the fourth or fifth floor. And I think this is in Paris. And so, like, e European elevators are, like, the size of a fucking shoebox. And it's me and this other couple, and I'm like, if it's just the two of us. And I've seen the elevator open and close now a couple times, and I'm, like, dreading this. I'm like, okay, this is, like, maybe three by three feet. Yeah. Enough for four bodies comfortably, right? But I always do that. I have, like, a specific thing I do. Like, I let everyone go first, and then I'll go in last so I can be close to the door, and I just feel like, okay, if I have to, you know, you pull the door, you climb up, whatever the fucking thing is, we're, we're out, right? <laughs> I get in, and then another couple gets in, uh, and Dee feel, Dee's holding uh, my hand, and she just feels me immediately. I'm like, nope, we're, we're walking up the stairs. Aww. I was like, we need the exercise anyway. Yeah. But, like, if I'm in an elevator in a hotel or whatever, it's usually fine. It's just when it's packed. Like, the worst experience I've ever had was E3 right before, I think it was, like, E3 right before the pandemic hit, whatever that E3 was. It was the biggest one yet. And we were in one like the hotel, one of those shitty LA hotels that the elevator like doesn't really work in that much ever. Yeah. And it was us and like twenty other people sandwiched, and they were hammered, so they were like jumping up and down and shit. And I'm like, Too you. Bad. I was like, I, Tim looked at me because it was Tim was with me, and he was like, dude, you're gonna be okay. And I was like, I'm gonna lose my shit and kill all these fucking people right now. Like yeah. I can't. You all don't understand how bad this is. We're stuck in here. There's no air. Granted, there's air coming. Through, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was pretty bad. Elevators are fine. Flights are fine now because I've worked through it. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't usually have any too much of a problem, period, anymore. Unless it's that one moment. And that's the, that's the shit thing with phobias and like panic attacks. Yeah. Is they just kind of, they you hit know. you out of nowhere. And you yeah. feel it and you go, ooh, you got to breathe through this and close your eyes. And if you don't, it's like suddenly you blank out for a second. You're out in the middle of the street with your shirt off, like running down the road. Yeah, being like, yeah. I'm free. <laughs> you can't stop me. But yeah. We were stuck in an elevator for probably like two minutes. <clears throat> this weekend, which doesn't sound long, but feels really long when you're in an elevator. We're at the Topanga Canyon Mall, coming home from a Korean barbecue. Yeah. We get in the elevator. It takes like a while to get going. And we're like, and it, we get to the floor, it rings, and the door opens like this much. That would freak me <laughs> out. I'd be like, we're going to die. <laughs> it's me, it's Andrea. Yeah. And then it's Lauren and Maria. Lauren, this is her worst nightmare. She freezes immediately. Andrea shoves her hands oh. on the door and starts to open it. Maria and I are both like mentally establishing pee corners because we are just conceded that we're going to be living yeah. here. That's the problem, right? Andrea, like it kind of starts moving in. Andrea pulls her hands out and then it like finally opens and stuff like that. And the people on the other side look terrified and they were immediately like, we're going to the stairs. Like, yeah, no, don't go in that this. elevator. Do not go in that but elevator. But I was really impressed that Andrea just tried to manhandle That is wild. That yeah. would yeah. not elevator. be my first. That would not be my first. No way. No, I'm man. like, Press the emergency button, yeah, press the I'm fire calling department. Somebody, yeah. No, I'm not losing fingers and being stuck bleeding yeah. out in this elevator. Fuck this feels no. like a Saw movie. God, I'm getting nervous just thinking about that. Fine. It was hey, fine. Dude, Mike. Your hair, hair looks great, homie. Thanks. Yeah, so shout out to my guy Rob, top of the hill. Yeah. Always for the fresh cut. You know, this time I said, I'll give you two options. We what? can do the one, the normal, or two, I'll let you do whatever you want. I'm in that I'm in that phase right now where I'm yeah. like, you know what, we're gonna do this. And I think he gave me like the, the semi normal. It's a little different. But uh, he did finish where he's like, Mike, if you really want to get weird, next time you come in, we can do that. And I was like, Rob, what let's does that do mean? It. What is weird? Well, I think, I think Rob, <laughs> Rob is worried of like, we have a look now, right? And we have yeah. like, we have the routine. The and look. I think every barber want, is like willing to take it there with you, but like at the same you time, doesn't want to have that moment of like, oh shit, I fucked up Mike's hair and like now he's going to look bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think there's that hesitation in all barbers of like, I don't want to go there. But like, if you really want to go there, like maybe you can push me there. And so I, I'm gonna push him next time. He yeah. does do a, a little mohawk. He does a really a good mohawk. Fan. Yeah, he's got it. He, I mean, the the boys up at the top of the hill, they got it. Good little vibe, you know what I mean? Doors open. You're looking out. Um, you know, kids are playing UFC video games in the shop. We're all laughing. Do they do the hot towel? No hot towels there. No, no. Really? You got to talk him into doing the hot towel. Really? 
The hot okay. towel is the best experience. I mean, some people don't like it. Yeah. And it's weird for me to say this because the first time they did it, I totally freaked out because I'm claustrophobic. Because <laughs> lo and behold, the when they cover your face with a piping hot towel and you can't breathe, <laughs> mm, you know, you, you freak out a little bit. But for whatever reason, like, dude, on like... The next couple times after that, I was like, I've never felt more relaxed in yeah. my entire life. I had, I used to have a guy, Roberto. I don't think he works there anymore. Uh, nice guy, older guy. We used to vibe, and he he looked a lot like Santana. So I was like, that's cool because that makes me think of Santana. I was like, do do Put you in a San Francisco zone. Yes, exactly. Oh, is he really? Hmm? That's cool. A lot of Bay Area. It could have been Santana Park and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Uh, but I'll never forget the first time we, he cut the hair. He's like, "Okay, hey, you want a hot towel?" I was like, "Sure." What does that do? And he goes, he gets it out, and it's hot. He plays a hot potato with it and goes. And like they they whiff it at you, and yeah. you feel the heat come. It's know. menthol, mm -hmm. and then they wrap it around and clear a little spot for you, and your problems just go away for yeah. three minutes. And then he did this thing where I'll never forget. He's just like, and he started like massaging my face through the hot towel, like doing the jaw muscles and all this stuff. And I'm like, this guy's getting tipped so hard right now. <laughs> yeah, I could have phrased that differently, but you know yeah. what I mean. Like it's like I'm like this is above and beyond. And yeah. then one time, he was literally like, hey, do you want like a little neck massage? And I was like. Anything you want to do after that hot towel thing, you Bring can it. do to me. That's right? experiment. What you got to do? Exactly. Like well, if you got, if you why, need help moving, I, I assume that? it's going to be a great experience. <laughs> I will help you. So, how much conversation are y'all bringing to the barber shop? Uh, so, like no. for me and the boys, we could talk for hours, right? Oh, yeah. I could talk forever. But I do notice when there's when it's me in the shop with the boys, I can you know play patty cake with everybody and get them all going. When there was like the little kids and some other people, I usually tend to like bring the energy and then I slow down. And then it's like, now I'm either staring at the floor or I'm closing my eyes. Do y'all do that at the barbershop? I, I, I go to the barbershop on like Saturday, last appointment, second to last appointment. I don't like there to be anyone in the barbershop. No. The one I go to is in the city and it's like, it's in an area where you get a lot of a lot of foot traffic by it. So it's kind of nice. And they, they do this thing where they like, they turn you around. So you're just looking out into the windows, which at first was really weird, but eventually is still fucking really weird. <laughs> But I like to just relax, and I don't like to talk too much. My guy yeah. I go to is a nice guy. He's a younger guy, um, and he just kind of talks every once in a while. But we're talking there's three other barbers there, maybe no other clients. I love that. I love to just relax on it. Yeah, I, I'm not – when I did go to the barber back in the day, I was not <laughs> – I was not talking much. My dad would – because me, my whole family would go to, like, the same barber, like my brother and my dad – um and like they all knew him and like they would always like well, what's up what's up my dad yeah. would talk to them but like i was never the talker i remember one time i went one of the last time i went to the barber and i was like i gotta start fucking just shaving my head because i don't like going to the barber <laughs> is that this one guy is just this newer barber and he's just kind of like out there and um just saying whatever and he's just he's like oh man how you doing i'm like hey yeah, yeah, i'm doing doing okay and he just starts talking about his wife's tits the entire time <laughs> just it. the huh. entire time i was just like okay well i'm just gonna shave now, my head from now on at one point did you think if i keep this going he'll yeah. show me a picture i, he, wow. I think it was going that direction. Oh, no. yeah. It was going that direction. Oh, he was like, he was like, man, sh it's crazy. I'm so excited after this. I'm gonna go, <laughs> go see my my girl's tits, and it's like, oh my god, Jesus Christ! No, like, you understand I don't know what's going on? It's empty, completely empty. Of course, of course. <clears throat> There's a five percent chance that you were he at, if you kept that yeah. relationship going. He was gonna be like, "Would you like to have sex with my wife?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that that was the direction. Absolutely. Yeah, that was where it was Absolutely. going. Wow. Yeah. And you're, I, you, I guess you're smart for dodging out of that, or not? Or Maybe not. <laughs> or not. Who <laughs> knows? God damn it! I, I talk all the time though. Yeah, because it's the hair salon, but also the girl that does my hair. I'm like, she's one of my friends from high school. We That's just easy. catch up a few times a year. But also, how long does it take? Because oh, D's in that a, chair for like hours. Yeah, it depends on what I'm doing. If she's Depends on if I have pink in my hair and she has to bleach it, which is, this is all left over from the last time I had pink in my hair. I haven't seen it in a while. Um, <clears throat> I'm usually there for like between two hours minimum, sometimes longer. I like that. I'm trying to stay for in the sure. shop as long as possible. You, you know, wild. I see you after your much storied career Thank you. as an esports announcer, mm -hmm. like right oh, as man. a shoutcaster. I see you opening a chain of, of Snowbike Mike's barbershops. Oh. The shop, yeah, yeah. The I shops, like right? Mm -hmm. the, the, we'll call it the mountain shop or whatever. You're going to be like the oh. ski shop or something like that, right? And it's just you occasionally coming in wise. in shorts with just, for whatever oh, reason, I imagine a lot of keys and change in your pocket. So as you Shut. walk by, you get the jingle. <laughs> and like, oh, that's the boss. And you just know everyone in there, even yeah. though you've never met them before. Love that. Love that. One day. I know that voice anywhere. <laughs> Mike does that. <laughs> I knew that All voice. I knew his voice. I knew that voice. Uh, I homie, voice I know that voice. What was it? I was with, uh, I was at PAX East. And, you know, after that incident, you know, remember I met Tech Nine at the urinal as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Dirty Dan Reichert came up and was going to the bathroom next to me. And I was like, should I strike up a conversation with Dan right now? You know what I mean? I chose not to. 
Yeah. But, I, you know, it's like one of those where it's like, you know me, I'll talk anytime. Sure. Yeah. Like, I was like, ah, oh, shit, maybe I should be like, yo, damn, what up, big dog? How you doing? Like, what's up with your life? You know? But I chose not to. Call a big dog at the funeral is crazy. <laughs> big dog. <laughs> what's up, low hanger? How you doing? It's insane. <laughs> oh, my dog. God. You guys are ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I have a I have a, a group of topics that we can go Ooh, through right now. Some okay. of them from my head, some of them from Melissa Hagler, some of them from Cozy Bear, and some other fun people over there who support us over on Patreon and can write in for some of these awesome topics. I would I could give you guys a choice. Do you want the choice of topics? Shall I list them all out for you? No, I think you should surprise us. Wow! 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 Okay! Okay! Wow. Okay! Do we trust Nick? No, but I think he should surprise. Yeah, us. he should surprise <laughs> us. Okay. okay. All right. Folks, we're going to get to our topic Oh, right after a message from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Factor. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. A ton of us here at Kind of Funny have been so thankful for Factor since we've been in the new studio, and you can too. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up your springtime goals. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factors ready-to-eat meals so you can get back to doing what you love this spring. Head to factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 and use code kindoffunny50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code kindoffunny50 at factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Got him. Two topics that we're going to kick it off with. Okay. One, last two weeks ago, maybe it was last week. I don't know. Time is slipping by like a flat circle. Roger shows me this incredibly famous pop star who uh -huh. also happens to be a hologram. Oh, which uh, I was going to bring this up. Yeah. This is funny. And I think to myself, <clears throat> how long? I'm, I'm merging the topics now. Oh. How long until we just can't believe anything we see on the internet? I think the time is now. <laughs> Man, I saw one today. I saw one today where it's like, it's close. Her eye was just a little wonky. <laughs> they were like, hey, we've, we've done it. We have, we have a, you, we have an, Do we want to know? We have an AI video of like, this is like the closest you'll get. And she was like, she was like putting closest on a professional we'll business presentation. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? It's close. She always turned to one side only. Mm -hmm. And her eye was just a little wonky on this side. But I was like, you know what? You're close. You're close right there. Yeah. I think so, media liter literacy is at an all time low. Yeah. Uh, and I think that people get got all the time. Yeah. But it's, 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 there's a lot of ways we can go with this discussion. Yeah. Right. Sure. You brought up Hatsune Miku, which is AI, but also not AI. It, it, yeah. Hatsune Miku is a vocaloid, which uh, is essentially a voice bank where someone is paid for their voice and then they know that it's being used for essentially an instrument, right? And this sure. has been going on for, I think Hatsune Miku is 13 years old right yeah. now. So like a long time. And Hatsune Miku is the like uh, cartoon that is the representation of this Vocaloid uh, character. Uh, and it's an instrument essentially. So it's like, it's AI, but it's like the most ethical version of this that you could possibly imagine. And she recently performed at a Coachella, which and is so not this video. And so someone own like, this property? Yes. Like, I, 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 think it's I am that? Like, as opposed to like, you know, your VTuber Twitch streamers yeah. are like, th this encapsulation is me. This is a voice bank, but like someone does own this, right? Yes, yeah, someone owns the rights to it, but anyone could buy the software and use it to make their own music. Which is really with cool. With her. Yes, with the voice. Yeah, which is really cool. I don't I don't know so where... So she uploaded it. It's AI generated? N uh, mm, now that's where... That's I, the question. That's where I get in, into the little bit of the, yeah, the nitty gritty. Studio cam. Where it's... I believe it's AI, like... Like, it's, it's through... Like, the voice is put through AI to, like, make it into, like, a Vocaloid. Like, an actual, like... Um, I don't know, like, instrument, pretty much. But, like, right. it's not actual, like, just generative that it's just one person's voice that is essentially broken down into an instrument where people can press buttons and make it into that's crazy song, which is awesome sounds and words yeah and, and this again stuff. this has been going on for 13 <clears throat> years one of david letterman's last performances was hatsune miku on that's his crazy. show wow uh, which is wild so like it's i think it's getting like a lot of like everyone's talking about it now because it's like 
oh my god, AI is getting crazy. It's yeah. like, no, this has been this has been around. This has been going yeah. on. But well, now this can't be much different from when like Tupac was at Coachella, yeah. like that hologram and all that. Yeah, kind it's of the stuff. same that technology. Was like Ten years ago. For sure. way, I mean, I get it, right? Like, I totally get that and the scene and the culture around that with the music and stuff. But like, it is wild to me that people pay to go yeah. to that. Just recently in this latest it's be tour, very expensive. Yes, and the latest yes. tour, um, I don't know. There's like some Lanza actually went to go see this live uh, okay. in San Jose. But for some reason, the latest tour, they cheaped out and they were just like, we're just doing an LCD stream. We're that just doing a stream. That pissed me off. I'd be like, oh, my God. No, everyone was very mad about it. It was yeah. a big situation. And also, Coachella looks like shit because it's just a black screen and they don't know how to shoot a screen with an anime character on it. So they're just like to the side and there's more rain. So it's like it just, more eyes, crazy. Yeah, crazy. it looks awful. Um, but yeah, yeah it, it's, there's a massive culture of like there's light sticks and people have the dances. And I, to me, this it was something that when I first started dating Leanza and she was like, oh, I'm into this. She never went to the concerts, but she was like a fan of Hatsune Miku since she was a kid. I was like, I don't get this. But then I started to think about it and I was like, oh, I totally get this, right? Because it's it is just a bunch of producers that are using her voice as the instrument. And yeah. when you go to see her live, right? everyone knows that she's not real, right? There's no one there that's like, oh my God, Hatsune Miku, she's a real person. Like, they're there to see the live performance with the guitars, with the ba with the drums, with the bass player, uh, and see their uh, the online music essentially elevated but to like, a live performance. Our, and dumb question, yeah. but is the... Um, is the live music actually live? Like, are they actually playing it? Or are they just kind of yeah. like... They got, they got a, band got a full band. Door. Okay, because yeah. I'm like, how do they time that then with the hologram? Um... It's, they just have to keep the same beat. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's my thing. Is I'm like, how much of this is actually fake? Are they really playing? I mean, I see the drummer playing. No, yeah, they're there, actually playing. Yeah, they just have a, a good choreography. S see, Mike, to your point earlier, like, this doesn't vibe with me either. But if you told me 20 years ago that legitimately I'd be making my living with other people watching me play a video game, I'd be mm. like, that's the stupidest fucking thing yeah, ever. Yeah. Yet here we are having fun playing Pokemon and having the Fuck time yeah. of our lives time with of it. Our lives. And people are just enjoying that. The hologram's cool. It's so sick, dude. So, how do you make the hologram as someone who's oh. not like, you know, into that kind of stuff? Is there like a screen? Can she be projected anywhere? Like if I'm in the crowd and I'm dancing, they can put a hologram no. right next to me. Like how does a hologram technology work? From what I am gathering from this, I'm I'm pretty sure it's like a clear TV almost. What they're, that's what they're doing. That's that's what that's okay. That's just my guesstimate. But they, yeah, she stays on the stage. Is it a giant net, a clear net that they're putting the image on, and the Good nets question. everywhere? It's like feels like a Kevin thing. Yeah, I just don't understand. I just, where just imagine it's like this. it's like they have like that little thing and they do this, and then Darth Maul pops that, up. And I, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready dead. for that. I'm that's what I. Want. Yeah. When I call you, Roger, and you answer, and I see you like that, and I'm like, I'm like glitching out, like all of the Star Wars <laughs> media for some reason. They they haven't figured out that technology. They it's always out the technology <laughs> to travel faster than light and have a hologram in the palm of your hand. But it's and not clear. fucking lightsabers. But they're like, no, we can't. We just can't get a good signal. We just can't. We haven't figured out five G technology yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite thing. How do how do these work, Kevin? Can you look that up? Yeah, I'm, it seems like there's a projector in the back. So there's I, a projector, yeah. but what's it? Pro is it projecting on just a clear screen? In one of the videos that we pulled up, it does look like there's like a some sort of screen, a, right? Yeah, so yeah, like, like a real some, projection screen or something. Yeah, so I wonder if it's just like. A, well, you gotta like see through it though, because I can see the other jabronis well, behind it. It looks like you know it, it I mean? looks like there was a screen that's like translucent that just catches the light. Yeah, that's what that it kind of looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. But then she's stuck in that six by six area. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah, but this is this is old. This okay, is I was gonna say because like if we're if if that's all it is and she's just on a six by six square, I'm not in the mood for that. Well, and that's a, that's one of my criticisms of this whole thing, right? Is that I've I've seen this a lot and I'm like, she needs to be like Travis Scott in Fortnite. You know what I mean? Like I want her to get big. I want her to do crazy things. Straight I want call. I want like <laughs> the call. background. So like especially if they're yeah. doing like the LCD screen, like at the very least, make her bigger, make like the backgrounds connect with what's actually happening on the screen. Like they don't do that much. It's just, it's just like they really commit to like, she's a pop star just standing there. Kevin, will you do me a favor? Yeah. Not my favorite. Last year, New Year's Eve up in Tahoe, they had this big EDM DJ. I'm going to need you to look up his name. I think it's like Exorcism or something like that. You'll, <laughs> you'll see it if you look it up like Tahoe <laughs> uh, New Year's Eve. I promise you. But this guy has like the mega screens that he does, and he gets like Shrek and like these crazy dragons yeah, like that. come out of the screen type oh, vibe well, while you're raving out. So yeah. like that one, that's more, more it, AR, we need right? to look that one up. Yeah, because well, that yeah, is it, like I, I go see that for sure. Well, that's more of like a trickery. Like I, nothing's yeah. actually coming out of that screen. Exactly. It's just like they do the thing where they have the black bars on the bottom, and then like it looks like that he's like climbing out of the thing, but it's, it's so not. Sick. It's just black bars at the bottom. Right. It's like it's very much akin to like the shit you've seen in the in the sphere in Vegas, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah where yeah. you sit in the sphere in Vegas. 
Vegas, and you're like, this is just a different planet. We got to go right to now. that. Yeah. Got to go. That shit's nuts. That Come would drive on. me nuts. That I'd be like, I'd, I, in my OCD, I'd find the one broken like panel and be like, I can't stop looking That's at that That's the panel. one. <laughs> the one pixel. Wait, Lanza was zooming in, in at the <laughs> Miku concert on the one dead pixel. <laughs> During Coachella, there's just one, and she's just like, "What the fuck are they doing?" What the I mean, you got to fix hard. that. Pencil. I know it's hard. I guess <laughs> people are spending hundreds of dollars to go see this thing. They're like, "Yeah, whatever." I What's just, I don't know, man. It's crazy. <laughs> Obviously, like technology is going to advance more and more, but like, will we ever really get holograms? Probably not, right? I think we yes. will. This, That's the, this kind of stuff. That's just an LED screen. Wait, didn't uh, I? I don't know exactly who it was. It, was it Drake that did the concert where he had like a young Drake hand him a book? That was just fake. Like that was just like straight uh, up a, like a actor. That was a person. Oh. Yeah, on the we, couch th- we with thought Drake. it was. Fa- we thought it was like a hologram, but it wasn't. We just like there's video of the guy walking out. <laughs> no, it was too, like Tupac <laughs> was the though. most famous one. Yeah, yeah. And this Tupac, cool, I forgot though. how they did, but Tupac's was cool. Tupac's was like light sources, but he was in the bad. corner though. Like he wasn't moving the whole stage. There was can like you a, look at the two? Can you look up Tupac? There was like a small area, right? But yeah. it, I mean, <clears throat> if Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre came out and they were like, "Hey, we're gonna go on tour and we're gonna have the virtual Tupac hologram," I'd go to that. Of course, yeah, I would buy that ticket for sure. But the, the scary thing is, like, you follow this where it's going, and you got to think like Taylor Swift's people, Beyonce's people. All these big pop stars, people are looking at this being like, how do we get her likeness? Like, how do we immortalize Taylor Swift right now, best she's ever been? Get all that, get her vocal silence, get it in AI, and then have the Eras Tour 2077. And it's ta- it's, a, it's, a, it's an AI-generated Taylor Swift, because that's where we're going, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. I think that there are more artists that are way more protective of their craft I'm and aren't like after will- she's dead. Well, yeah, but aren't willingly engaging with AI, I think. I think they're I from artsy people. Every art person, whether it be music or actual art, seems to be way more. No, none of them oh, are really embracing. I'm AI. not. I'm not. I'm not saying like that. The the artist is going to back it up because obviously Taylor Swift's got plenty of life left and plenty of great songs left to get on stage and do. I'm talking about the rest of the industry. That's yep. horrible. I'm talking about the fact that there's still a Michael Jackson musical happening right now for the fifth time or whatever it is. Yeah. I'm talking about like. They don't. The second they die, the vultures come in and go. How do we get? Yeah, how did that, I guess that it's must crazy. have been a screen, huh? I don't really know. Yeah, and but this was a long cool. time ago. I, this was like ten years ago. Yeah, this was like ten years ago. Is right, Joey. This was, was a long time ago. That's got to just be like a, a projection screen or something like that, right? Man, shout out to the Tupac hologram. Yeah. What a dope Coachella this would have been. It was. But like to be there. And yeah. like not oh, know okay. that it was happening, you know. To not know Tupac was going to come I, out on there's stage. There's no yeah. like clear video of it, unfortunately. Man, well. I want to know how this shit works. I want a hologram of me. Yeah, because I mean, I, when I have a giant LED. Yeah, but when I like when I pass, and I, obviously this company will continue through the next millennia. When Absolutely. the turn of the century happens again, when we have the the Y2K, the 1999 fiasco, that because nobody f- thought we'd ever make it there, I want generations later, young Snowbike Mike Junior Junior. To be like, I don't know, let's ask Uncle Nick and have my desk still be there, clean as a whistle, and my hologram, my hologram pops up. <laughs> and I go, in my day, we used to eat Fruit Loops. That and then it goes sick. down. Take off your shoe. Take off your shoe, <laughs> lay on your back. <laughs> let, me, let me show you an esteema lock. <laughs> Do you think that Greg Miller is currently putting together like a voice bank? Of yes. Him? Oh, yeah. So he, he, can he would jump immortal? on that. Did you ever watch, um, it was a really sad movie, a really beautiful and poignant movie. Uh, it was uh, the the Michael Keaton movie where he, he learns he has cancer mm. uh, like the same week that he learns that his 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 wife is pregnant. Mm. So he spends the next nine months making videos for his son to like uh-huh. teach him how to grow up. And then it's very sad. I think it's called My Life. I very very not. sad. I have to imagine Greg's doing that, but with just benign shit. Yeah, just yeah. being like, this is the best kind of cheese it. You gotta have this cheese it just to torture Andy and just to f- and send it to Andy. Yeah, yeah. I love that you associate Greg with cheeses because you steal his cheeses. <laughs> no, because Greg and I bonded over cheeses. Yeah. That this company yeah. wouldn't exist really? right now if it wasn't for the flaming hot cheese. Or not flaming hot cheese. The Tabasco oh, spicy, yeah. hot and spicy cheese. It. Yeah. Greg and I. That's it. Oh, it was so sad. Who's the girl? Nicole Kidman, I think. Oh. Yeah, it was a good movie. She looks so baby. Yeah. It was just really fucking sad. It was, it was one of those where you're like, you, you started off and you're like, yeah, I'm going to be crying by the end of this yeah. movie. And 20 minutes in, you're come. fucking dying. Um, no, Greg and I became best friends because we worked on Up and Noon together. And I, they were like, oh, you guys are doing the Start Channel together. We'll sit you next to each other. And in between our desks that were like twice the size of the desk now, um, it was me, 
Greg and then Drucker, and we had a we the delineating line. One day, Greg just put hot and spicy cheese it's on there and i was like let me get a couple of those and we would just kind of turn and talk and, and eat those nice. yeah and then make and we made the show and it was you know obviously super successful got us to late night television yeah. from there we started doing movies from there academy awards some tweets come out we can't do the academy awards anymore we get you know what i mean yeah. it's like well, it's yeah. fine but i was like oh we forgave them already yeah kevin hart reference i like that cool i'm thinking about me going to the met gala that's all you know what, what I mean? just like what would i wear you know that kind of stuff to the met gala yeah to so the met gala what would you wear? I don't know. I, I would let someone dress me. You know what I mean? You would have but to. I'm willing and open to do anything, just like my haircut. I would look at someone. I would say, "Show me your vision." That's not true. And Mike, I'd let them draw. So fucking, that's such I, a and liar. I would go to the next person and say, I, "I would say I'm gonna let three different people show me yeah. their vision, and I will Dude. wear whatever." And if they one like. of those people puts me in a hoodie and shorts, that's, they're so, getting it. Here's what I was gonna say. I, you're Mike, I got the vision. For uh, you. you got the vision. I know the vision. Let's dress him. I want you to close your eyes, and I'm going to tell you. I'm going to explain to you this vision. Obviously, the Met Gala is themed, by the way, so you kind of have to stick with whatever the theme is of yeah, that it's year. It's loose for men, and specifically. Kind of you know, sure. loose. the bar Mike, is so low. It's so, it's so low, low. Mm -hmm. Mike. The yes. theme is for you: oversized hundred thieves hoodies. But wait, I don't mean like it's big. I mean it is. 15 times the size of a hoodie oh, like so the, the bottom color. of it goes all the way down <laughs> to your feet yes and the hood itself is like twice the size of you the hood mm. is just a cape it's just a cape but it says still tiny little hundred thieves right there tiny right there would okay. you wear it yeah i'd wear the that outfit gets big like but that's the branding gets small smaller okay. you know like that's that. the bit it's unassuming it's not pretentious it's not a bit there's some art. jabronis that wear shorts to the met gala right yeah there i think for all did there's some shorts lee pace yeah. Pharrell had a moment where he wore shorts to everything. It was pretty cool. He had a big hat and was like, that's dumb. I can't wear the hat. I don't like the big the hat. hat never, what was the <laughs> deal with the hat? The big hat never it got just me. just attention. You know what I mean? He just wanted, wanted one thing for himself. You know? I wanted to wear a hat. Yeah, he doesn't get enough attention. He doesn't get enough attention. Multi-Grammy award-winning Pharrell. <laughs> he he's making a, mo a movie about his life, but it's, it's, uh, it's a stop-motion Lego movie. Hmm. And Is it's it? like actually like a Lego like produced thing oh. about his life. It's like a full-on movie. It's like weird. That's Ugh, cool. Lee Pace, love well, my cool. life. Lee Pace Holy is a fucking shit. specimen. Uh, Can specimen. I tell you about that? Lee Pace, six seven. Have you seen his husband? Yeah, they're both very it's good looking. Really gentlemen. unfair. Like that's the it's one that obscene. I get real sad about. Like, ugh. I met him one time. Um, what? Yeah, because he came to do. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, what? what in no, my, just Joey's reaction was just great. <laughs> just like it, what? In my prior life. We used to do, I used to do IGN Live at Comic-Con and E3 oh, and stuff like that. And so Lee Pace came Robert in. Downey Jr. Coming um, out of that hotel, that hard rock. <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, and Lee Pace walked in to the room and I was like, holy fucking shit, that man's a god. No. That's what a human being should look like. And then I looked at myself and I was like, why can't you be like that? Oh. <laughs> but my, fam my favorite part, I think, I think that was like a year after, but <laughs> it was, oh, that, is that his husband? Yes. Good looking man. I like got that. that. I got like that, that Aaron Eckhart love. butt chin. Love that. I love it. Can I get one more thing off my chest before we go do to the next topic? Do whatever you want to do, bro. Really quick. Watching the Transformers year one trailer yeah, today, whatever. Oof. Pretty cool. You know, Tim, Tim retreated it. It's pretty cool. It's whatever. You say, it's whatever. You know what I have? It's what, what it's I the whole have movie. The trailer's 50 minutes long. It's, it's crazy. Cool. I only I'm watched a, a, the first bit and I was like, I think I've had enough. I don't need the two jabronis introing the trailer no. and trying to be cute and funny, but no. not being cute and funny. It's like, hey, dudes. Get to the trailer. Like, yeah. I didn't like, we got a new trailer. It's going to be a great They talk. usually it's reserve that for the movie theaters. Oh, what I didn't see that. I, just, I was watching it on IGN's Instagram <clears throat> and just started with the trailer. Oh, no, no. They, they got the two jabronis out. out there trying to giggle and laugh with each other. Who, it's, like, no, it's, no. it's at uh, Hemsworth? Chris Hemsworth and who's playing, who's playing Brian. Starscream? It's not Brian, Brian. Harry Henry, is it? Yes. yes. Yeah, it is. That's great. No, they didn't have the vibe. It wasn't right. They no, and it's also like, which do you prefer more? The intro where it's the two leads talking and joking, or the one where they just spoil the entire fucking trailer in the first five seconds? Which one would you prefer? I prefer a trailer that is 30 seconds long, not five minutes long. Because I, I was going to the restroom earlier, and I started watching it, and I'm like, I've been done for quite a while. Yeah. And this and, trailer and who's is the number going. two? <laughs> and they get all the way through. The, I mean, yeah. it's, I'm like, I've seen this movie now at this point. Yeah. I know all the beats. I know when they get the... The cool chest power up when they can't transform, but they gotta transform. But then he's like, "Oh, I gotta get wheels." Every joke. I don't know who's playing Bumblebee. Those <laughs> jokes fell wheels. flat. Not I think that's good. Michael Keegan or Michael Keegan Michael Key. Yes. Yeah, it is him. Is. Yeah, yeah. And that's just God bless him. But you can't you can't throw him into a movie, and like and like have him do all the heavy lifting no. for the comedy. You gotta have the other leads kind of and pull some of that. Real talk. You're the Transformers guy. You no. know everything about Transformers. Tim is the Transformers You're the Transformers guy. guy. I'm you the Transformers guy. Yeah. I know everything there is to know about Transformers. Why Why are they cars 
on Cybertron? They weren't originally, I don't think. Why the fuck are we doing this? Why the are they idea cars? was that they were just like, and correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, chat, live chat, Felipe, I'm looking at you, Michael Hidalgo, I'm looking at you, Cooper Fuqua, I'm looking at you. The idea was that they were just like mechanical aliens yeah. that when they came to Earth became cars to, to fit in. Disguise. And be yeah. able to drive around and be disguised. Robots, robots in, disguise in disguise was the whole concept yeah. of it. Actually, Kevin knows a lot about Transformers. I, I'm pretty sure that they, they were, like, they were just Cybertronian, like, sh like, ships, like, planes and cars and motorcycles. So they're just, so they were cars, yeah. American. It's a planet of cars. Earth cars. Yeah. No, no, nobody said that. In Cybertron. I don't know. Because it's just like, when I watch the trailer, it's like, why, why is he a You're also You why also need to remember that when they made these shows, yeah. all of these shows, they designed the toys before they made the yeah. actual show. Yeah. So if you ever watch the toys that made us, the theme that runs through a lot of 80s shows is that they were just really unabashed vehicles to sell toys to dumb shit kids like me. Love and that. fuck me, I loved all those toys. Yeah. I had every goddamn Transformer. Oh, yeah. I had the Starscream that turned into a fucking legit gun. That's it was it. this big, and if I ran down the street with it <laughs> on the wrong night, yeah. a cop might have shot me because yeah. I had that gun, That's and nobody Megatron, gave a right? shit about it. What's that? That was Megatron. Megatron. What did I say? Starscream. Starscream. Starscream, no, Starscream was, was the plane. Yeah, it was Megatron, um, which is hilarious because I was always like, when he transforms in the show, he becomes a gun big enough for like Starscream to hold, yeah. but in real life, he becomes a gun big enough for me to get shot holding it, mm. so it's that kind of vibe. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I had the one that turned into a rat. What? That's Rattata. Come watch our Pokemon. Let's play this. Watch our Pokemon. Do you <laughs> I need can't get help. that reference unless you watch your <laughs> No, my just call Ratatata. He's like, that's Ratatata. I'm like, why are you why are you my Uncle Lou from Jersey? Ratatata. Ratatata. Everybody knows Ratatata. Yeah. Can we, as a group, try to convince Tim that I wasn't on Transformers in review? No. So I can get out of seeing this movie. Absolutely not. And I'll tell you why, Joey. Because if I have to do it, you have to do it all. I know. Can you Transform like, into me, <laughs> and then we could switch places. Because oh. I'll watch these horrible movies. I don't give a Roger's shit. Willing to watch my name is movies. literally Raj Former on Twitter and everywhere because I watched Transformers, the original, the Michael Bay one, when I was a kid. And I was like, what if my name was Roger and Transformers? And I was like, Raj Former. <laughs> that is literally the. That's really where yeah. it comes I from. I mean, no what, idea. What, is the, what is the year of the first Michael Bay um, Transformers? 2005? I was. But yeah, ooh, no, it was definitely like man. That was back when we st we staked all of our hopes on Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, I really did. And, and, it yeah. was that in really Disturbia. Did. Disturbia was a good Disturbia. movie. Disturbia, I stand by that remake, right? Yeah, I was like nine when that movie came. Just think about the Biggest Transformers the movies and the Ninja Turtles movies and pretty much anything that. Sorry. Yeah, so I was eight years old. Yeah, pretty Makes much anything sense. that Michael Bay touches is the same level of really bad. And the Transformers one is passable. Every other Transformers beyond I that. Heard starts getting so unbelievably confusing, convoluted, and poorly yeah. made that it's almost a joke when you get about halfway through it. And you're like, like I forget the one of the last night or transform the whatever. They're in the desert. They're always <laughs> in the desert. <laughs> yeah. Josh Jumel spends the entire time in these movies in the desert. <laughs> and then and then somehow he morphs into Mark Wahlberg in the desert. Yeah. But these movies are so it's it's like the, it's like a joke that they don't give a fuck about any sort of plot moments in these movies it's just show the movie the things transforming so that we can sell it to foreign markets and yeah. sell more toys in those foreign markets that's it yeah. merchandise 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 so it and it's like a joke that you would see in another hollywood movie like the remember you watch the boys when they're making that shitty knockoff of the, the arguably shitty movie uh justice league yeah <laughs> it's like that or it's just a commentary on how fucking bad movies are except this yeah. is real we actually yeah. had to go watch this movie yeah wild so yeah you can absolutely join joey yeah. you have to join too Okay. Making the executive decision. Okay. Yeah. I also just want to ask a quick question. Uh-huh. What, like, junior high cafeteria does Mike raid to get these little tiny mini <laughs> drinks that he brings in? Hell yeah. I hate it. Pineapple juice, Raj. Me and Raj go to the corner store why all do, the time. You don't no, the, why do you do the pineapple juice? Little juice. Why do you do the little pineapple, pineapple juice, Just a little pick-me-up. A little pick-me-up. Little pick-me-up. Little pick pick, pick, you know pick. what I mean? I'm trying not to drink Frappuccinos all day, every day, so it's like... What you're about just taking hundred grams. You just taking twenty two grams of sugar to the dome. Boom. Dumb. How many? Twenty two in that tiny ass can. Twenty two grams. That's a candy bar. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, it's pure Shit. It's pure I sugar. might be better for you. Wait, did you <laughs> say <Sorry>. really? <laughs> really? <laughs> I took it as it's small, so it can't be that bad. <laughs> small but concentrated. <laughs> That's what, dude. Juice is the is the secret killer, man. Yeah. People, they, there was a moment there where like smoothies and shit were all the rage. Yeah. Remember and then they used to like feed us Sunny D growing up. Oh, Sunny D. Sunny D. Rocks. Remember that purple stuff that was in the the, the ads. Sunny. Oh, what? Oh. 
there was an ad that was like, whoa, we're going to raid mom's fridge. Where do we got it in there? Oh, we got some juice. We got some purple stuff. Oh, Sunny D. Oh, Sunny D. Let's get the Sunny uh, D. Yeah, Kids diamonds. love the Sunny D. Of course Sunny they do. D. It's pure sugar. Yeah. Pure concentrated sugar. And tang. And then everyone started getting diabetes. Tang. Never had tang. Never. I've, I've never heard stories tang. about tang. Tang with the orangutan. I know, but I've never had it. He was an orangutan mascot. Roger, back in the 90s, yeah. we had really you awesome commercials. No, I don't. Oh, I don't. Like, you know about Dunkaroos? <laughs> You're so sure. I was like, I'm so sorry he's making you listen to this explanation. I don't know about this thing. So he was orangutan? Yeah. You know about Dunkaroos? Yes, I know about Dunkaroos. Kangaroo? Yeah, I know that. Tricks? Yeah, of course. I don't find okay, tricks. Okay, good. Worried about you. I don't know Tang, though. Tang. Yeah. That was like a short. That was a short. Tang. That was the history. commercial. She Kevin will bring up like an old commercial of it. It was crazy. Tang was not. Tang was on its way out when I was a kid. It okay. wasn't Sunny D. Never was. No, Sunny D. They always continues to, to endure. Okay. Fruit but fresh. um, I don't know that's that. the purple stuff. Um, Tang was popular because it was like the astronaut drink. Yes. Right? Wasn't that the whole the astronaut? I don't want to say that because I was like, am I being stupid? Right no, now? no. no was, definitely oh. the monkey of some sort is like in an in a what do they call? I don't know. They're being an orangutan. What? Yeah, so that's like that's the concentrate they took up to the mo- to the <laughs> yeah, to space that. or whatever. I didn't know that either. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just know, like Kool Aid, like you like it's like I think powder. So. I, 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 I remember it, it coming in also a can, but okay. I never. My, we were never a tank family. Mm-hmm. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know. How that works. <laughs> we were like a Minute Maid juice family. Okay. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Basically, Elena Scarpino had a coupon for it. We were that kind of family. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But to be fair, growing up, we drank a lot of Coca Cola because it was the cheapest, sugariest thing you could possibly feed yeah. a child. We were a Pepsi yeah. family, which sucked. Oh, oh, tough fucking one. Hated That's it. So unfortunate. Tough my one. brother, man, he would only we would only drink. Well, at least my whole family would just be. It would be like one Pepsi in the fridge, and the rest would just be out room temperature because my mom and my brother are just insane people. So they would just drink room temp Pepsi, and that's the way they preferred it. Oh, I drink Crazy room temp Diet like Coke Italian all the time. <laughs> you prefer that though? Yeah, like I purpose, like I don't put it in our fridge. And I put there it up go. top. Oh. Today. But like in San Francisco, like the cans, if you leave them yeah. on the counter, are like relatively chilly. Yeah, maybe a summer in New York. Yeah, a little bit different. <laughs> they're de- they're definitely cooler than not. Yeah. Okay. A little less weird. A little less weird. I have a confession to make. Oh shit! I don't think I've talked about this yet. I haven't had a Diet Coke in like a year. What crazy? about Coke Zero? It's nothing. <gasps> yeah, there was a there was a. I've been trying to quit diet soda for a long time, and finally it just stuck. I haven't had a diet soda. I haven't had any aspartame in my system in forever. Isn't yeah. that wild? Wow. Ever since you put up the big curtains, he can't see the fridge anymore and go to it. <laughs> no, it's before that. I think it's been. I think it's been like. <laughs> I, I, it's mind. probably coming up. It's been a while. So I don't remember the last time I had a conscious thing. The- a conscious thing you're doing? Conscious thing because what was happening was I was drinking Diet Coke or Coke Zero instead of water. Mm. And then I was yeah, staying up all so. night just like looking through the wall. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, well, I'll switch over to decaf coffee at night and then in the morning so that I'm not super caffeinated. I tried to switch decaf 100%. I failed at that, unfortunately, yeah. uh, because you get, <laughs> turns out I'm so horribly addicted to caffeine, you get wicked headaches yep. to the point where you can't, like, you're, you can feel the back of your eyeballs, yep. which is a tough one. So I'm trying to wean off caffeine completely, um, but part of that was I was like, what can I give up first? And Diet Coke was the, <laughs> was was the first one. Oh, shit. That was Tang. The well, this girl needed Tang or else she could feel the back of her eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> Why is her hair wet? I don't know. <laughs> it's a Tang. Gets everywhere. Yeah, that they're monkey getting hit by, they're getting it was hit by the Tang. tang oh, they're getting they're hit, hit by, by the Tang. Shit God. was crazy so back refreshing. then, man. Look at this kid. Oh, that's the most, that's the most 90s kid I've ever seen in my entire God, life. That's when we were just doing incredible. anything with animals and like commercials and production. Oh, yeah. We were just this like, is... fucking give the give the monkey some fucking tang. We'll figure Bro. it out. Just it was the it. Taco Bell Chihuahua, the Chihuahua and Dunstan checks in. <laughs> and Spud McKenzie. Dude, okay, five Spud orangutans McKenzie. died making oh, this. Oh, absolutely, dude. And nobody cared in the absolutely. 90s. Absolutely. say who's oh, Spud McKenzie? Yeah. Chihuahua. I agree. Yeah, who's Spud McKenzie? Only the most famous dog from the 80s. Is it Spot? Lassie? No, well, Lassie was pretty famous. Actually, Lassie is arguably more famous. Okay, the dogs from Homeward really Bound. From 80s, Spud though. McKenzie was like it was a mascot dog, and I can't remember for what product. I want to say, like, say it was Bud Light or Coors Light or something like that. I'll horse? look it up. I'll slack it to Kevin. It the horse, <laughs> the Clydesdale. Uh, yeah, no, the, the Bud Lights. Here horse. we go. Is this, yeah, there we go. The Ready for oh. it? Look at these are hot ladies. Really look at that Clydesdale? hot guy. Oh, it's Bud. It was Budweiser. There's Spud. Oh, what? the Target Damn, dog. You fucking rock. Okay. So they had a Target dog too. He wasn't at the target dog. But he it's was like the same type. He's of one of those ugly ass dogs that the has like no delineation carrier. between his his forehead and his nose. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. Spud was it, man. You know, largely because there was just like when I was a kid, maybe potentially hitting puberty. I just remember all the commercials with ladies in bikinis uh, being like, course. "This guy, this dog, fucking has a good life. Dog yeah. gets it. <laughs> I'm gonna drink Bud it. Light in ten years." <laughs> I thought honestly, I think that was just <laughs> Budweiser Bud Light right now. <laughs> that was just straight up Budweiser. 
Oh, he is a target dog. Yeah, it's the same type of same dog. dog. Yeah. What what is that dog, Kevin? The bull terrier. The bull terrier. Joey's right. It's a bull terrier. That's great. Yeah, I don't like that. Now they just just made this dog into a cartoon. Like I don't appreciate that. Like I want it to, I want like both, right? I want like the uh, real dog and I want like the cartoon as well. Like yeah. now it's just the, Are you talking about the Target word. dog? Yeah, the Target dog. Target dog specifically. First off, Target and their esteemed, wonderful, beautiful marketing team. I apologize. Can do whatever the fuck they want in this house. You're this right. is a Target house, right? Yeah. I love Target. You can take that sort of attitude, I'll yeah. say it, attitude that, tude, that you've had, that two two deronomy, you take that shit straight over to CBS. Yeah. Okay, you go Flaunt that over there. We're a Target household. Bull, uh, bullseye dog. Dogs live on a ranch just north of Los Angeles. Trained by David McMillan, operator of Worldwide Movie Animals. In 2004, American artist Amy Brazil was commissioned to paint an eight foot by eight foot portrait of Bullseye, uh, which now hangs at Target Corporation headquarters. Oh, Wait, can we get an eight by eight painting of some animal here? Yeah, we can paint Greg. Ah, hey, you fucking got him. Mm-hmm. I had an embarrassing moment at Target this weekend, last weekend. Uh-oh. We, Landon and I, we're just children, right? We have nothing to do on a Saturday, <laughs> right? So we're just like, fuck it. Let's go to Target. Let's just walk around, right? We're walking mm-hmm. around. Of course, we, you know where we go? The ball aisle. You know what I mean? <laughs> the, a bu- ball the ball aisle. ball aisle. A bunch of bouncy <laughs> balls. Her and I are looking at each other. Let's get the ball. Bounce it as high as possible. Bang, bang. We're bouncing these balls as high as possible. <laughs> Grown ass adults. <laughs> adults. Guess who turns the corner? Jonathan Security. Dornbush. <laughs> Jonathan the turns the corner with his with his partner, and they look at us, and I just look at them. I say, "We're bouncing balls, just bouncing balls." I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how to how to explain the situation, but like we're just bouncing balls, and like, hey, that was a vulnerable moment, and maybe we're gonna be closer after that. You know what I mean? Maybe uh-huh. they're gonna look at us and say, "You know, those guys are cool," and maybe never talk to them ever. Or again. they're like, "Yo, let's never talk to like, them." Again. Yeah, they were it's on a Saturday so just funny. fucking throwing balls. Had no, <laughs> n- didn't have anything in the cart, nothing. Just completely just walking. Did around. you have a cart? Uh, we had like the little hand ones or whatever. Yeah. We had nothing in there. We were just bouncing balls. He's just there to bounce balls. Just bouncing balls. And if anyone asks, you go, well, we're going to buy something. <laughs> yeah. And you look in, it's just a thing of mayonnaise. That's what we came here for. It's a crazy Saturday. Yeah. Honestly, Did people- you continue to bounce the balls after they walked? Uh, no, it was embarrassing. Video. We left. We left immediately. Like They were not giving us any judgment. <laughs> yeah. They were like, oh, we get it. We're looking at video games. Ha ha ha. And then they left. And I was just like, I looked at Lanza. I was like, we gotta can't go. go to this Target ever again. No. Can't go to this one ever again. <laughs> you got to leave the city. Yeah. I might have to. That's embarrassing. Might have to quit. This sucks. That is embarrassing. It sucks. <laughs> Holy shit! No, there's no, there's no shade thrown in Targets, ladies and gentlemen. Because Targets no. are car, Targets are amazing. Once yeah. a week, I probably go to a Target. Just Please. eat with the one over there. Just walk around a little bit. Fuck yeah! I'll go with Mike. I'll go with anyone. Yeah, people come. I was, well, yeah, we they, need a little more Target runs in our that's true. business here. Favorite Target run ever was when Elise was in town. Okay, I don't think you worked here yet. I don't think so. Well, this was an old, old office, and we were just like we went to lunch there i forget what you it was probably for went to like poke bowl yeah it was something stupid and then i was like i gotta go to target we just wandered around target for an hour hanging out with the lease awesome. buying stuff it was so fun i miss them yeah, hope i see that. him soon hopefully hope i see him soon hopefully. we should do that with every guest that comes in the studio go to take him to target just take him to target and just see what the vibe is do they catch the vibe of a target run where do they take us what yeah what is it you let them to? lead right? well yeah where do they go the real question is are they going to be me or are they going to be my wife hmm Okay, let me explain to you what we do every single Saturday or Sunday, depending on what we got going on, right? We always do the run of Trader Joe's and Target. It's the one-two punch in the city. There's a Trader Joe's and a Target, always right, right next to each other, yep. right? Always. Uh, so we do that run, and I just, I don't have the heart to tell her because I'm in love with her still, that I just want to spend a little bit more time in the Target. Wow. But she wants to always get lunch afterward, and every once in a while, We'll be like, what lunch are we going to get? Is it going to be a bougie lunch? Is it going to be like some like something that's going to be a little too expensive and then it'll give us enough sweet potato fries? And then we always, every single time without fail, decide we'll just get Chipotle. Yeah. Because there's Chipotle right there too, right? So she's always hungry to get to the Chipotle. And I just want to go to the toy and electronic section of Target and hang out for a couple minutes. Maybe the bouncy yeah. ball section now. You now know, I'm going there. Whoa. You know what would be sick? What's that? If they had hot pretzels. Get a little appy, Whoa, little hot okay. pretzel on the walk, a slurpee. Hold down that hunger until we're done. We're talking. You're talking. You're talking advanced level mathematics. I'm, I'm letting you know, Roger. That a nice little warm, buttery, salty pretzel goes a long Does way. Does he try on to get walk. you to get no, a pretzel just, every time? He took me to the mall the other day. <laughs> he took me to the Dick Sporting Goods, and he's like. 
gotta get a gotta get a, a, a pretzel. We gotta, gotta get a pretzel. Get a gotta, get a pretzel. gotta get a pretzel. I'm like, a no, we don't. Pretzel, yeah, it's I mean, top you, tier. But like, we're not walking the mall, right? We just went to Dick's. Like, we went to the Dick's entrance. He wouldn't let me buy we the eighty dollars And he's like, <laughs> we gotta go the opposite direction and go get this fucking pretzel. I'm like, no, you gotta we do get not. the pretzel, Rod. You gotta we get the pretzel, Rod. And then we went on like a two two hour hike or whatever. Like, we did not. Beautiful I didn't, hike. We didn't need that pretzel. We didn't need that pretzel, Mike. I could have used two pretzels to be honest with you. Think about how there. much further he would have hiked if That's he'd had true. the pretzels. That's true. That's true. Shit. Oh I, I, I stopped you. I apologize. I apologize. Before we wrap up, a very important question. Segwaying. Where do you guys come down on the little mini puffy pretzel sticks with the cheese that you can dip into it? You ever, you ever oh, fuck the with pretzel that? bites are god tier. Oh, the pretzel bites. Yeah. No. Yeah? That. No? That. No, they're way better than the, the twisted che- ones. The, che- the cheese is only for tortilla chips. Period. What? End of story. I'm not putting no fucking pretzel in there. Pretzel by itself. Pretzel by We're going to go to a baseball game and I'm going to change that. Okay, I, I'm sure it's Could good, but like one. I got hard. How about mustard? There. Yeah, sure, fine. Okay, but the How cheese you, you draw a line. Yeah, cheese is too much. How do you feel about the cinnamon sugar? Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. That's fine too. Joey, I just slacked you something. Could you read it out loud for the kids, yeah. please? Read it out loud. Joey, please tell Roger it's his last day here. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, it's too much. Well, you, you don't like a tortilla chip? It has structure. This is too soft. Oh, I love it's, the tortilla chip no, too, but you're missing the pillowy. But it's dense. Oh, yeah, man. Look at that. Oh, my God. Look at that. I'd rather that be mustard. It's not I'd rather that be mustard. Shut up, must with your mustard. I'd rather that be mustard. Let me tell you what's doing too much. The, the rock current salt? pretzel bite shove a mini hot dog in the middle. I love the idea. The That's, issue is, is the it. hot dog always flies out. What? Then I'm just no, eating a, No, uh, no. I'm letting you know. I'm letting you know You're from experience. Like, I bought a lot. I buy you, them. The hot dog is falling out of the pretzel. I take like one bite, issue. it flies out. It, it's just <laughs> it not. Really it's, it's called doing too much. That's why doing you got to suck much. the hot dog out first. No, this is a God skill here, issue. Right? Suck that hot dog out. <laughs> yeah, like suck the hot, the hot dog, dog out. out while watching Fifty Shades of Grey that one time. I just want to say really quick. Someone in chat, Gary the Third, said, little beer cheese. Okay. Maybe if it's high quality cheese, I'd be into it. But like the generic, like just bullshit cheese that's just whatever, like the nuclear yellow. No. Yeah, here's, here's what I'll tell you. If you're at a pl- first off, yes. That Fuck fucking okay, hold up, hold up. That is yeah. not the Annie Ann's pretzel that you're getting. That that's is the, the pig in a blanket. That's the Kevin Coelho pig in a blanket. They're delicious. They're incredible. I want one right Go now. to the Annie Ann's yeah. pig in a blanket. Oh, pretzel. That's a right pretzel. Look at that. It just doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. See, the thing that's better than these are the pizza bites where they just have pepperoni on top. Here's you my get a thing little about marinara, marinara. This, that, do you say the? Do marinara. you not say yeah, the last? It's like a marinara. Whoa! Wow! You know? I didn't expect that one. If you want yeah. to learn how to speak marinara. Italian, you got to just leave off as many letters as you possibly can. <laughs> <Yeah. so I'm laughs> still get it, Mara. Ma, you know, I get a little Mara. <laughs> and like, oh, okay, he's got that. He's got that. If you're at a place that's a nice bougie restaurant, right, and you order the pretzel bites, and they bring you something that's yellow, and it's not a bougie cheese dip if yeah. it's a mustard get up and leave that place it's a cheap ass restaurant mustard is the cheapest condiment and i say i like mustard mustard but i will say so it's good if you it, Dijon, mustard's like no nah, not I'm, Dijon. I'm, like a brown mustard. I'm a brown mustard guy break your apron and get the fuck out give of me the frenches that. stick with the classics you guys are crazy i i don't want to be here anymore <laughs> this is crazy i'm gonna go to target and bounce this fucking ball i can't do this anymore. let's go get some pretzels let's go get some pretzels has kevin ever asked to have a pretzel machine here like, no. you know, he has a lot of ass, like, for the yes. kitchen and stuff. Yes. Has he ever asked, well, like, let's have, just order I, a, a hundred frozen pretzels and then get the, the twirly warmer and just put it up on the desk? I feel like, like he did ask for a popcorn machine at one point. I asked for one thing, an ice and water dispenser. He almost mm-hmm. had it. Almost had almost it. Had almost it. gave it to us. I've, I've never, I don't think I've asked. Uh, maybe one time I joked about a donut machine. Oh. <laughs> Mini donut Light machine. Joke. Now, I want you guys to know that Kevin is telling this story, but he's only telling half the story. For the longest time, he was talking about this ice machine. Yeah, yeah. And how he's got an in. He had the and how me and Roger were there. We, we were we were there. Machine. And I and and you know me. I don't like change. I don't like anything new in this office because to me, anything new in this office is just gonna be a problem. I gotta deal with later down the road. Ice machines are gonna who the fuck knows? It's gonna freeze over and explode, hit through the wall. I gotta patch the wall up or whatever. Water but Kevin's gonna leak. Kevin knows that I love iced coffee, and he sold me on this thing. He yeah. was like, "Dude, this is the jibble that I like. We like." I'm like, "Fuck you, right." So finally we okay it, and then I've never seen Kevin more crestfallen, more heartbroken than the day he came. He pitched him on the hard sell. I was like, remember that deal? And they were like, sorry, dude, can't do it. And he was just like, he was, you were broken for a while about it that, was, Kev. It was, I, it affected me greatly. Yeah. <laughs> I was happy about that. Yeah, I remember that. I remember Some say that. it's still affecting Kevin. I, all that. I, I got my regular ice in this water right now, and I'm having a terrible time. Just regular. <sighs> what be regular. a bummer, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to do it today. 
for the Kind of Funny podcast. Let us know what you thought of this podcast in the podcast comments below if you're watching this on YouTube. Hey, if you're watching this in your car, listening to this in your car on one of the many podcast services we have out there, tell a friend. Or if yeah. you really liked what we talked about today and you want to support us, eh, feel free. Maybe throw us a Kind of Funny membership over on Patreon or YouTube uh, to get all the shows ad-free. Watch us record live like so many people like Felipe and Matthew and Gary the Third are doing right now. Uh, and you get a daily exclusive show, which is bonkers and fun and maybe one day uh, will be the end of Greg. We're not quite sure, but there's a lot of stuff in that that's just bonkers and wild. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, folks, it's been our pleasure to serve you. We love you so much. If you're watching, you don't have any more bucks to give. Thank you. A comment, a subscribe, a subscription, so any of that stuff. What was that? I think that was the girls laughing. It's a cackle. <laughs> there was a cackle in the <laughs> other room that cackle. sounded like someone just killed Those a lion friends. of some sort. <laughs> uh, folks, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. I love you. Bye.